Good morning, good morning. Isn't it wonderful to come in and hear these young people say, praise God. Clap your hands this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining Trinity Baptist Church worship service this morning. Thank you for those who are here in the sanctuary, as well as those who are with us on social media. Psalms 27, 1 through 6 declares, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against us, my heart shall not fear. Though wall should rise against us, in this will we be confident. The one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide us in his pavilion. Amen. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide us. He shall set us upon a rock. Amen. And now shall our heads be lifted up above our enemies round about us. Therefore will we offer sacrifice in the tabernacle. We will sing. Yes, we will sing. We will sing praise unto the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and holy Father, it is again that we humble ourselves before you. We have entered into this place today, oh God, to lift up your holy name, to give you glory, to worship you. Father, you have been so good to us, and we just come to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for your son, your one and only son. Thank you for every blessing, oh God. Thank you, God, for the guidance that you give us as we struggle to find our way. Oh God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you because you are God and you have all power. We thank you because you have loved us, oh God before we even can love ourselves sometimes. So you continue to be with us each and every day. You wake us up, oh God, and you start us on a brand new day. And we have come into this house just to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Today we have a birthday celebration. Uh, we have Miss Normal People, who is 85 years old today. Miss People, if you're here, please stand. We have our own Deacon Robert Coleman, who celebrated a birthday on the 13th, I believe. And if there are more birthdays in this morning, you can stand. Deacon Cheatham celebrated a birthday. <laughs> amen, amen. Another year's journey, amen. <laughs> and we are grateful. Let us pray for Danisha and her mom, who was displaced after a fire in their apartment. Pray for our church family, as well as all who are sick and shut in. Pray for those who have lost loved ones, because prayers help to comfort them in that time of, of sorrow. Tomorrow night, 
April 15th at 7 p.m. we will have a church meeting. On April the 21st at 11.30, immediately after service, we will have crucial conversations with Brother Warren Braxton in the KD Turner Auditorium. The Mother's Day luncheon for May the 11th at 12 noon, the committee is asking that you please pay for all of your reserved tickets on today after service. VBS Vacation Bible School is underway for 2024 and volunteers are needed for registration, for decorations, for greeting, food preparation, music, and arts. So we need volunteers to come forth if you'd like to work with Vacation Bible School. Our next meeting is Wednesday, April the 17th at 6.30 in the conference room. If you cannot attend, please let a committee know that you're interested in working with Vacation Bible School this year. It will be June 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday um, at 5.30 p.m. The cruise committee will be in the auditorium after service this morning to take your deposits and your payments. Remember to give your tithes and offerings. As you came in today, you were able to give. You are able to give again as you leave today. You may also use the Givelify app as well as online. Someone and watch a most incredible thing one day, and they said, I watched a small bird trying to gather string. I presumed that he would have used it to build a nest. It is amazing that this little creature, acting on the instinct alone, would gather such a thing. You see, a bird cannot reason, so a piece of string would be nice to, be, to use for building my nest. So the bird decided, I'll take it. God has given this little bird the natural instinct to function. You probably are thinking, what's so incredible about watching a bird do what it naturally does? The, they watch the bird as the bird made several attempts to gather the string. She would pick up one end of the string in her beak and fly upward, but the string would fall and she would try it again. This activity went on for several minutes. What made this so incredible was that the other end of the string was attached to a boat sitting on a boat trailer. And then I thought of the bird's persistence in her efforts. No matter how many times she failed, the bird kept on trying. How often is it that you and I show this kind of persistence in our endeavors? Even though the odds of getting that particular piece of string was greatly against the bird, but I was hoping that she would succeed. I thought about the bird's focus on the string. She was oblivious to the fact that the string was attached to an unmovable object. Right. All she saw was the string, and she went after it. Do we often keep a single focus on a particular goal? Or do we often allow our focus to scatter in several directions and several objectives? Then we stand back and we wonder why we don't succeed in achieving any of those things. I thought about the bird and the great confidence that the bird had. Her intention was to get that string. The bird was not deterred by the fact that a large boat was in her way. 
but watching the scene unfold time and time again, the, the bird would try to fly away with that string. So I almost expected to see the bird lift the boat off the ground. And so much like this bird, we need to be persistent. We need to be persistent. But Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. We need to stay focused. Set Colossians 3, 2 reminds us, set your mind on things that are above and not on things that are on the earth. And we need to be confident. Hebrews 10, 35, 36 reminds us, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward for you. You have need of endurance so that you have done the will of God. You may receive what is promised to you. So as we journey through this coming week, let us be like that bird, persistent in all things, focused on all things, and confident in all of our efforts as we serve the Lord. Amen. We will surely find success in our endeavors. So let us try that this week. Amen. We will now have a selection by the choir, followed by scripture and prayer by Deacon Robert Coleman. In that order.
scripture reading comes from John 8, verses 4 through 11, and I'll be reading from the, New, the King James Version. They said unto him, Master, this woman has taken an adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what says thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up, lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even until the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman was standing in the midst. When Jesus lifted up, lift up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those, that, where are those thine accusers? Hast no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. God's word for his people. Let us humble our hearts and go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thankful hearts, thankful for seeing another week. Thank you for your new grace and mercy, Lord, that you woke us up this morning with a reasonable portion yes. of our health and strength, and we were clothed in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for carrying us through last week because some time was up, some time was down, but we look back and we say, only because of you, Lord, we made it through, and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And right now, Lord, we ask for forgiveness because we know we fall short and always don't do the right things. So right now, Lord, we say we, we repent and ask you to forgive us. Lord, ask now that you bless this, bless this church of Zion called Trinity. Bless each person in the sound of my voice within the sanctuary and on the digital platform. Lord, we ask that you bless each ministry, bless each, each person in, in the sound of my voice. Lord, we ask now that you bless our pastor. Continue to strengthen him and give him a word from on high that we may have somebody running to come. What must I do to be saved? Lord, we ask now that you continue to bless our sick and the shut-in. Lord, be with those that may be going through a doctor's appointment or may be going to court tomorrow. Be with them, Lord. Be with them that may come in the door and, and just have a problem, Lord, but they just want to leave it at the altar for you. So touch that person, Lord, and be with them. Lord, we ask now that you be with the young people in the world because this world needs, they need help. Yes. So, Lord, we ask that you continue to be with them and lead them. Lord, we pray for our nation because we see the turmoil going on all over the world. So well, we know you look, you look on down on us and you are in control. And we say thank you for that. Lord, after our work is finished here on earth, we ask for a place in your kingdom. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The closing of the day, I fall down on my knees and pray. Thank the Lord for protection as I sleep. And in the morning when I rise, I lift my hands. 
reach towards the sky. Thank the Lord for the angels watching over me. At the closing of the day, I fell down on my knees and prayed and thank the Lord for protection as I sleep. In the morning when I rise, I lift my hands towards the sky and thank the Lord for the angels watching over me. among Baptists that where there are no babies crying, that church is dying. You all didn't hear me, did you? The church where no babies are crying means that church is dying. And so we have a sign before us today that Trinity is still growing. Come on and give God some glory right here. I want the family to come on both sides. Come on over. Is this not a wonderful family? Hallelujah. A big family. God is good. I know they have a wonderful time at family reunion. Whole lot of chicken. Whole lot of barbecue. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. We're patient. The more the merrier to the glory of God. Like the people of God say amen. Like we say amen again. We are delighted, we are excited that these parents and this family have decided to dedicate this child to the glory of God. But it is a promise that mama makes, daddy makes, all of the grandparents, all of the aunts and the uncles and so forth. It is a promise that you make this day before God, angels, and this assembly. I'm going to ask you just two questions. 
And I want you to respond, if it is your sincere desire, by simply saying, I will. Do you this day in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, let the presence and power of God give you what you need in order to raise this child. If that be your intention, will you right now before God and angels say, I will. I didn't hear y'all. That's much better. <laughs> Do you on this day, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, will you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to guide you, to lead you, and to give you the strength to be a Christian home, raising this child in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. If that is your intention at this moment, before God, angels, and this assembly, will you now share, I will. Say it again. God bless you and God keep you. I'm going to ask our chairman uh, to take the baby in his arms if the baby will let us. <laughs> Every head is bowed. Our Father and our God, it is in the name of Jesus that we lift this child to the throne of grace. We lift these parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and every member of this family that is at the altar today. Give them what they need to help this mother and help this father raise this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We say thank you. Now, Lord God, these parents have a tremendous responsibility. This extended family has a tremendous responsibility because the devil does not want this marriage, this relationship, this baby to truly grow up loving the Lord. And so because of their commitment, because of the promises they have made in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do declare that God and all of his angels are going to be with this family in the rearing of this child. We say thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and go in peace. Come on and praise God by the clapping of your hands. God is good. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you, girl. All right, Doc.
give God some praise. Let these young people know how much we appreciate their ministry of music today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Every second Sunday, there is something that we call Youth Zone. It is the seed that we are putting in the ground that will eventually grow up and become the junior church of the Trinity family. Some people really don't understand what I'm saying about junior church, but you're looking at a gentleman that was in the junior church in 1954. That's way back in the day. And in that church, we had junior deacons, we had a baby choir, we had a children's choir, and we had a teenage choir. And from 11 until 12, while the adults were in the sanctuary, we were in the auditorium, and we were praising God. I will never forget the baby choir. They were babies, three, four, five years old. And you might say, well, what could they sing? All they did was hold a tambourine, a triangle, and any other little noise maker that they could make, and they would follow the direction of their leader while the pianist was playing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Everybody that's satisfied, everybody that wants that to happen, praise God right now by the clapping of your hands. God is good. Yes, he is. Every head is bowed. Bless us with this word. Teach us, instruct us with this word. Encourage us. Inspire us with this word at this hour. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you as we take our seats to the glory of God. The word of God for the people of God comes to us from the 8th chapter of the gospel according to John, focusing our attention on the 6th verse. I want to read this from a different translation for our understanding and meditation. We're going to read it today from the New Living Translation of the Bible. As par our tradition, will you be kind enough to repeat after me with power and Holy Ghost authority? Repeating after me right now. They were, they were trying to trap him, saying unto him, Jesus, we caught her in the midst of adultery. Do you say, shall be done? Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. We want to reason with you at this hour, with this thought in our mind. I want you to repeat after me with power a five letter text to the church. A five-letter text to the church. I often look back on early education that I experienced, and I remember, because I do not think that they have such a course for the second, third, and fourth grade, but back in the day, on your curriculum, on your report card, just as there was spelling and history and reading, there was another subject. It was called penmanship. It was a prerequisite in early childhood education and was looked upon as a mark of intelligent boys and girls. It's called cursive. And today, cursive writing isn't what it used to be. 
especially with the emergence of computers because they have dominated our daily discourse. Even among computer users, the emphasis has changed. There is very little emphasis on learning the keyboard on a typewriter to get speed and to avoid mistakes because most computers come with a, thank you. That's Reverend Rita over there. God bless you, Sister Rita. They come with the spell check and they will quickly backspace if a word is misspelled. So there is a instant identification of mis misspelled words and the correct word is right at your hand. The emphasis today is on speed. Spelling is not significant as it used to be because in 1993, something came to pass called SMA. Somebody say short, message, service. Now, it really didn't catch on until 2001 and 2004 with the masses using their cell phones. And then something happened. A generation of young people and youth latched on to this new communication method that they could use from their cell phone, and that is when the idea of texting was born. Today, text messages are the way that many, many people communicate. Although it has a different and unique way of being what it is. In other words, because the average characters are about 140 for a short message, they have now developed their own sense of communication. This is what I'm talking about. You all know what LOL is? Laughing out loud. BC means because. BRB means be right back. And then there is OMG. Oh my God. Why did they do that? Because they wanted a short way in order to communicate. What I've come to share this morning is that when God was angry with the world, he destroyed it with a flood. When he was angry with Sodom and Gomorrah, for their sexual sins, he destroyed it by fire. When God decided that he would no longer destroy the world with the flood, he sent a rainbow. When God wanted to show his love for the world, he sent a five-letter text message to the world in the person of his own begotten son. J-E-S-U-S, -S. one, two, three, four, five, J-E-S-U-S. -S. It is a five-letter text message that came from heaven, and he said it all when he came. If the world needed healing, Jesus. If the world needed to be saved, if the world needed to be taken out of its current condition of sin and Satan, Jesus. The international distress single is SOS. But when the world was in trouble, there was an international response. And that response is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus. Jesus was heaven's answer to man's dilemma. The answer could be summed up in one name, Jesus. Christians know how to send the message. We may not know all of the syntax of modern SMS system, but we are excited to know the name of Jesus. 
because it is the sweetest name we know. Somebody say, what does the text teach us? This text focuses on Jesus as he writes on the ground. It was a message that only love could understand. All of us who love the Lord and read just a little bit of the Bible knows Jesus had some fearsome enemies. The Sadducees and the Pharisees saw an opportunity to trick him and therefore brought to Jesus a woman who was caught in adultery. Remember, this is a trick. Remember, they're trying to, in fact and indeed, discredit the prophet from the Nazareth. And so they asked the question, what shall we do with her? That was the question. Now, the Mosaic law required death for the woman caught in adultery. The religious leaders were hoping to catch Jesus in a self incriminating circumstance. If he said she should be put to death, he would be exercising an authority that only Rome could give. If he said otherwise, then he would be out of order according to Moses' law. Jesus stooped, wrote on the ground, and then responded. The Bible said, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And so the very enemy, the, those who were trying to trick him were convicted by their own conscience, convicted by their own guilt. And the Bible says they left one by one without throwing a single stone. Until this day, over 2,000 years later, nobody knows exactly what Jesus wrote on the ground. It has been the subject of many books, articles, research papers, but what he wrote has never been revealed. But it has never stopped the speculation. But there are so many ideas about why Jesus did what he did on the ground. Now, one source says that Jesus was using something that the rabbis of his day used, and that was a shortcut to refer to certain scripture in the Old Testament. And so they said Jesus must have scribbled in the ground a reference to Deuteronomy 17. At Deuteronomy 17, it required witnesses to a crime to cast the first throne, the first stone. So in other words, if you are accused, the person that accuses you has to throw the first stone. Now, no one understands the message that was written, but everyone understood the final result. The love of God was shown when Jesus told the woman, go and sin no more. God was sending a message. God was sending a message to us in 2024 that when you really love the Lord, he is always open to forgiveness. God sends his message to the world in many different ways. Sometimes he sent prophets to speak a word to the people. Sometimes he sent what looked like an enemy to give the world his word. When Balaam refused to see the angel, he even made a donkey talk. Despite the fact that we do not know what he wrote, it is obvious that it was enough for his accusers to shut up and walk away. The question that I want to raise is simple. What if we took our Bibles 
as seriously as we take our cell phones. Let me say that again. What would it be like if you used your Bible like you used your cell phone? What if we carried it around with us in our pocket and in our pocketbooks? What if we flipped through it several times a day? What if the message in the Bible is received and will we receive and obey? What if we gave it to the kids as a gift? What if we used it when we traveled? What would it be like to use that to the glory of God. Well, what I've come to communicate is the reality that unlike our cell phones, we don't have to worry about the Bible being disconnected because Jesus is present, powerful, and he's already paid the bill. What this text tells us is that Jesus was sending a message of love to the whole wide world. While the world does not know what Jesus scribbled on the ground, it is sure that it must have meant love because the whole ministry of Jesus Christ was about love. It is a recurring theme throughout the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. After 400 years of slavery, God showed his love for Israel by freeing them from slavery and carrying them to the promised land. He showed his love by the example of Goma and Hosea. Even though she cheated on him, he was willing to restore her again. And so the message about real love is right here because real love is not the physical attraction, but real love is a product of godliness. Real love is demonstrated in the story of our text. It is often misunderstood, but the truth is God will love you in spite of yourself. Only a person who loves and has been loved understands the language of love. That woman about to be stoned was God's child. And Jesus is God's son. She could not read the writing, but she knew one thing. When it was all over, she had been forgiven. When it was all over, she had been given another chance. Ain't that you and ain't that me? We all have another chance. We've all messed up. We've all fallen in the ditch. We've all sinned against the glory of God. But God has a methodology to forgive us of our sin. Ain't God all right? He is another chance God. So my brothers and sisters, we should know that when God decided to send us his message of love, he did not take a shortcut. He sent his only son. The decision to send the message from heaven would only be meaningful if it came from the great God Jehovah. They failed to understand how one man can touch a person and they be healed. But love understands. We can only imagine what God must have thought when he decided to give his ultimate demonstration of love. Now, the truth is, neither you nor I know the mind of God. What did God think? What did God say? Well, we can only speculate. God could have said, 
I will give them the stars. But soon the stars will stop twinkling. I could give them the moon, but after a while the moon would cease to shine. I could give them warm winters, warm summers, but summer only lasts a little while. I could give them silver and gold, but they too will lose all of their value. I want to give them a message that will be with them until the end of the age. I want to give them a message that they will be able to hold on every day of their life. And so what did God decide? It's in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus was the son of God in the flesh and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I said he gave the world his only son. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. They whipped him. They spit in his face. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They hung him high, stretched him wide, put him in a borrowed grave. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave with all power. All power is in his hand. Is there anybody here? that knows what that means. If Jesus has all power, then I'm his child. He's my father. And whatever I need to make it, God is always on time. Is there anybody here came this morning to praise his name because he woke you up this morning? and started you on your way. Oh, ain't God all right? I said, ain't he all right? Put food on your table. Put bread on your table. Took that same bread. Spread a little jam on your bread. And on top of all that, he made a way where there seemed to be no way. Is there anybody here? Have no doubt in your mind. He's my God. He's my rock in a weary land. He's my doctor in a time of storm, in a time of sickness. And I came here this morning to praise his name because he been so good so good ain't he been good say yeah say yeah oh, he's so good do you love him I said do you love him then shout hallelujah do you love him then say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor right now and say, God is good. Been good to me. Been good to me. Been so good. Ain't it been good? Yeah! Yeah! Been good. He sent us a text message. Five letters. J 
J-E-S-U-S. What does that spell? Say it again. Say it one more time. The doors of the church are open. And the name of Jesus is the center of this invitation. Because there is no way that we can believe that everybody in here is in a church. Everybody in here is saved. But I come by to tell you, you can come in here one way and you can leave out another. You can come here without a God, but you can walk out of here knowing that the Lord God is going to direct you and lead you for the rest of your life. All you've got to do, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Would that person come right now? Come on out. You don't have a church. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Don't let this crowd fool you. Every last one of them. Us. Pulpit. Choir. And on the main floor. Sinners. God said sinners. Saved by grace. And we are asking that person who has not yet been saved. Who has not yet made their confession of faith in the Lord Jesus. This is your moment. This is your hour. This is your time. Might every head be bowed. Oh, Holy Spirit, oh, Heavenly Dove, move on the heart of that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that needs to confess you as Savior right now. In Jesus' name. Right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. If that person is present with you, make up your mind and come on. Don't worry about the crowd. Just tell the neighbor next to you, I'm going to see Jesus. And they will step out of the aisle in joy that you have decided to make that decision. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Every Sunday this year, before we leave to go home and face the rigors of next week, we make an affirmation. Somebody say affirmation. We affirm in church what we're going to do when we are not in church. And when we affirm it, we hope that the Holy Ghost will keep it in our conscience and in our heart and that we can be about God's business next week. Repeating after me right now. Next week, I will read my Bible. Next week, everything I touch will be a success. This week, I will keep my mind right. This week, I will keep my heart right. This week, I will keep my tongue right. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I declare it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, may he rest and rule and abide with each one of you henceforth now and forevermore. Might we all say amen. Shake somebody's hand and say go in peace. Amen.